just a young punk rock kid that knows what's going on. An everlasting life is a free gift to all those who repent and trust in him. Do you believe in God's existence? Of course. So do you, is that what's giving you your morals? Yes, and my parents. <laughs> Here's a conversation with Ray Comfort and a young lady named Elizabeth who has some serious earrings and some serious thoughts about the things of God. She says her mother is a Christian and has a Bible, but she herself has not been reading it. Sometimes you need to go right back to the beginning and just lay out the basics. Elizabeth, your apartment is next door to a bank. You find a secret door into their vault. There are billions of dollars in the vault. You can take $2 million and no one will know. You will not get caught for sure. Would you take the money? No, I'll be too scared. Scared of what? I don't know. They might be somebody watching. Yeah, but you're not going to get caught. That's the scenario. The two million dollars is I yours. Think I'll feel guilty because that's not my money. So. So you I'll think it's wrong to steal? Very wrong. Yes. And why do you believe that? Because it's just wrong. I wouldn't want somebody stealing from me, so I wouldn't do the same to another person. Do you believe in God's existence? Of course. So do you? Is that what's giving you your morals? Yes, and my parents. <laughs> and your parents. Yes. So is there a heaven? Um, I would like to think so. Okay. Are you a good person? Are you going there? Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I would like to go to heaven though. <laughs> yeah, well, let's see. We'll do a little test. There's one you can do. Um, how many lies have you told in your whole life? Um, a lot. I can't even keep track. <laughs> so what do you call someone who's told a lot of lies? Mm. It rhymes with fire and begins with L. Fire and begins, begins with L. I can't even think of a liar. <laughs> oh. So what are you? A f liar? Okay, now have you ever stolen something in your whole life, even if it's small? Irrespective of its value. Uh not from somebody else, like from my sisters, yes. You stole from your sisters? Well they do it to me, so yes. <laughs> so you've never taken something that belongs to someone else, even if it's small in your whole life. Be honest. I think I have, but I can't so remember. You call someone who's stolen things. A I thief. A thief. A thief. Now, have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. Okay, that's called blasphemy. It's very serious. Now, Jesus said if you look at a woman or look at a person and lust for them, you commit adultery in your heart. Have you ever looked at a guy with lust, sexual desire? <laughs> of course. That's just part of being a human being, right? Okay. <laughs> so, Elizabeth, here's a quick summation. By your own admission, you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterate heart, and you have to face God on Judgment Day. If he judges you by the Ten Commandments, but looked at four of them, on Judgment Day, do you think you'd be innocent or guilty? Guilty. Heaven or hell? <sighs> heaven. I'm going to keep it positive. I want to go to heaven. <laughs> Why would you go to heaven when you're a lying um, thief and a blasphemer, I mean, adulterate heart? Everybody does it, though, but if you ask for forgiveness, God will forgive you. That's all you have to do? I think so. Not according to the Bible. It says there's something else that has to be done before you can enter heaven. Do you know what it is? Ask for forgiveness, right? No. If you stand in front of a judge and you've committed serious crimes and say, Judge, I just want to ask your forgiveness. I committed the crime, but please forgive me. He's not going to let you go. He's got to make sure justice is done. He's got to make sure punishment is given out. And it's the same with God. He says, all liars live their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no adulterer, no blasphemer, no fornicator. No liar will inherit the kingdom of God's here in big trouble. You know what? Uh, you're making me feel bad. <laughs> That's good because it means your conscience is doing its duty. It's, it's showing you that you're in trouble, you know? Yes. Do you know what God did for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? Mm, I don't know. What did he do? He became a human being, Jesus of Nazareth, who suffered oh. and died on the cross. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Yes, he took the punishment for your sins. You broke God's law and Jesus paid your fine. That means God can legally dismiss your case because your fine was paid for by another, Jesus of Nazareth, who died for you and rose again on the third day. So, Elizabeth, God can dismiss your case because your fine was paid by Jesus. You know the Bible verse? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes um, in him. Isn't Sh that the uh, Genesis something? No, it's John chapter 3, <laughs> verse 16. I'm thinking it's the first. <laughs> See, I need to start reading the Bible. <laughs> well, you need to think about your salvation. Everlasting life is what God can give you because of what Jesus did on the cross. Yes. Rose from the dead, and what you've got to do is repent and trust in Him. Don't just say, God, I'm sorry, but turn from those sins. It's called repentance and it's, trust in Jesus. It's hard, but I'll try. 
Well, it's like putting on a parachute when you're going to jump out of a plane. If someone says it's hard, you say, what are you talking about? There's a 10,000 foot jump, put it on. And we're talking about your eternity. So please think about this. Elizabeth, if you died today and God gave you justice, you'd go to hell. You've got to do two things to be saved. You've got to repent and trust in Jesus. When are you going to do that? Um, I guess I have to start right now. Yeah, that would be a good idea because this is your salvation. This is where you spend eternity. All you do is say, God, I'm sorry for my sins. Turn from them and then trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute and God will forgive you. So you're yes. going to think about this? Yes, of course I'll think about it. You have a Bible at home? Yeah, I have. We have a couple. My mom is like Christian. She's into God. And... Oh, no doubt. She's praying for you. And that's why you've, you've talked to me today. <laughs> so I trust that God's speaking to your heart. Yeah, so I guess so. I guess. Thank you so much for no, talking to me. No problem. No problem. Let me give you some literature. Thanks for talking. Learn how to share your faith biblically. Each week, we send out a free ministry update, and it contains a short video clip. Ray finds colorful characters, he witnesses to them, and then I chalk talk the clip. Here's some samples. Do you believe in God? Of course. I believe God actually learns through us. That, there's a heaven right here. Multiple times a day, God hugs me. What planet are you living on? I have no problem standing before the Lord as I am. After seeing new clips each week, and understanding the biblical principles behind them, you will end up saying, I could do that. There's no charge for the update. Just go here and sign up here, and we'll send it to you every week. For God so loved the world that He gave His only forgotten Son. Also, while you're there, check out the School of Biblical Evangelism. The School of Biblical Evangelism is a full-blown online evangelism course. It'll help you overcome your fears It'll help give you the answers to the hundred most commonly asked questions and objections to the Christian faith. You'll find details on livingwaters.com.